G'day, welcome to this episode. Okay, so these doors have been in storage for a while. Uh, and now that I've done most of the body work and I'm waiting for panels, I'm gonna to start to strip these back and look at all the rust that needs fixing on them uh, in preparation to put them on. Uh, we'll get etch primer on them and then seal them ready to, uh, to start positioning them on for the, uh, the cow panel. All right, so I thought while I'm waiting uh, for this cow panel to arrive and, and also other, other odds and ends, um, as far as rust repairs go, uh, I'd get these out of storage. It's been sitting up in the mezzanine for a while. Um, I haven't been looking forward to this because this is probably almost as much work as the back quarter panels, to be honest. It's, uh, they're almost probably too far gone. You could probably throw them away and buy another door, but I've been looking around and most doors are, you know, these days are in the same condition and they're around about $300 each. So I thought, well, there's no point buying another one in similar condition, I might as well just try and fix it. So um, anyway, I'm gonna start by stripping them back. There's still a fair bit of paint and stuff on them and, uh, and see how much rust is underneath. But um, to give you an example, most of the, the bottom sides of them down in the sill areas are stuffed. And uh, that's a pretty common problem with um, water coming down at blocks and he's got these little water vents here you can see and they block up pretty quickly with rust and debris uh, over the years and then starts to rust and eat it from the inside out also the outer skin uh, tends to go down the bottom sections as well so you can see there's a couple little bubbles come through um, you can buy a whole new skin for it but i think um, based on what i need i may try to avoid that um, and get away with a few patch repairs so yeah, first things first, I'm going to get the wire wheel out and the drum and fibre discs and just try and get all this paint off and then uh, we'll assess uh, the damage from there. Um, also, uh, I've got a new addition to the workshop and this is it. I've got a little mate and I uh, haven't named him yet, but he's a Border Collie Cross Kelpie with a smidgen of uh, Labrador in him. And we've also got to come up with a name for him. So at this stage, he's uh, just called Dog and uh, he's going to be a good asset to the property and also to the, uh, to the shed. How are you, mate? Hey? All right, so we'll get back into the doors now. Okay, so here are the, the, uh, the back sections of these doors. Just show you all the, uh, the bare metal work that I've done. So I've got into every single area that you, uh, that paint was on. I haven't worried too much about where the door skins are actually gonna be and the rear door skins are gonna go on because that's obviously just gonna be covered up anyway. But yeah, there's no major rust on that section anyway. So yeah, the etch primer and the, um, paint will go over that, body fill will go over that. Yeah, got in as far as I could. I've got right in and try to get everything out of these sections. I've popped all these little black um, plastic rivets out, which I'm going to replace. Even though they weren't in too bad a nick, I thought oh, I'll just replace them all in here. There's also these white um, plastic uh, sleeves that go in here as well, which the door skin pops into. And also, why wheeled them out because I figured why you can buy the whole kits and just uh, replace them all why not um so yeah they go right along there and that's where the rubber seal as you all probably know goes in so getting to the rust this uh area here is quite bad because it's right in a difficult spot and you know there's no repair panels for this kind of thing so I'm gonna have to do a tricky little patch here I'll avoid the uh the corners and then just sort of fold it around if I can it's got a bit of bog in here, which I don't know whether I should try and chisel out or just leave. 
And um, for now, I couldn't get in there, so I've just left it. When, I come, when it comes to uh, final body work, I'll probably look at that. Um, I've taken the hinges off both, both doors so I can get right in, clean all that. The hinges probably need some uh, sandblasting because they're quite a fiddly thing. So I'm getting some garnet bags and I'll use that little uh, sandblaster gun to do that job. Now getting to the, the real major issues with these doors, and you've all seen these, this is where they go. Um, right on the corners here, and yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, so, goes right down there. This, where the skin sort of meets that section there, it's all right. Um, and then you follow along, you can see the actual drain channels that go along there. So, they're the culprits, they block up. <clears throat> you can see it's really pitted there. And here's another drain channel here. So, that blocks up, and then yeah, literally the water would, you know, fill it up like a fish tank, and then it can sit there for years without even you knowing. Um, and, the, and the mud and the soot sits there as well and just eats it away. So, the, I'll put it up in the screen now, but the rare spares panel does this whole, or the rust repair panel does this whole lower section along here. I don't know if it includes the drain channel. I'll have to check that out. Anyway, I've ordered two of them. And uh, before I etch prime these doors, I just thought I'd leave them bare metal until I get these panels in. I know I've been talking about getting these panels for a couple of weeks, but um, it's a pretty monstrous order for, with everything all up. So I just had to, uh, yeah, make sure that I've got everything I need and um, so I don't have to order it again. Uh, so that's the, what is that? The um, driver's side, this is the passenger side. Same deal, e eaten away. I did show this on video two or three in the build series, um, which was ages ago. Same deal. Down there, it's not as bad on that side. Drain channels uh, aren't as bad on this one, actually. So I could probably get away with just sort of repairing just on the corner of that bend there, cutting it out. Um, as you can see inside here, it's really bad as well. So once I cut it back, I'll reveal what's inside there. And um, there is some deadener here as well, which I started to cut back. It's quite thick, it's probably about, you know, five mil of uh, sound dinner. Just wanted to see what was hiding behind there. You can see it's etched in a bit um, and it's eaten right through there. So I'm gonna uh, continue to, uh, to get that right back just so I can see if there's any major rust that needs, hasn't sort of poked its all the way, head all the way through yet, but it's still there. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure that it might be all right. So yeah, that is the, uh, the situation on the doors. And they are going to be the last major uh, rust repair on this car that's uh, it's going to require some skill. Um, so yeah, I, I just have to wait for those panels to come in. And then I wanted to try and do the doors before I hung them, just so that I know that everything's lined up, ready for the plenum, for, sorry, for that cow panel to uh, line up, because I know that the doors and the guards um, dictate, you know, the, the gaps on the cow panel. So that's the reason I've held back on that cowl panel and decided to do the doors. So I've been waiting for these parts to come in from um, Rare Spares and they've finally come in. Um, for the doors, I've also got the plenum, uh, the cowl panel that's come in as well, plus the rear um, huge wall behind the windscreen. Um, the doors have got two panels. Oh, and a floor pan as well. So. I've got everything I need now to finish all the bodywork, which is great. So just talking through these uh, these door sections that you can um, that you can buy. As I mentioned uh, earlier, you can get the full skin um, from this uh, company up in Queensland. I'll uh, I'll put the link down below. They've just got a Facebook page, but they do the full skin. But it's, you know, it's like four hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to save these doors. So. You would have seen these. Um, there's a rare spare pressed panel for the rear side of that door. This is the left hand, left hand side door. So yeah, that goes, as you can see, and I'll put the uh, footage up now, but this section basically is where it all rusts out, right along there, and right down to uh, where the doors, front door skin molds around. So um, yeah, it's a reasonably good 
good panel, reasonably accurate, but uh, it doesn't have any drain plugs, which are in the original. Um, and it also doesn't have the the uh, the drill holes for when the, the actual rubbers click in. So you need to drill them out as well, so you make sure that you're gonna mark it. So yeah, as per usual, it's about 80%, 90% there. Um, but you know, there's a disclaimer on the, on the panel saying that. So, yeah, it's by no means a finished panel, but it's a really good start, starting point, um, and you sh I surely wouldn't be able to do it without it. So that is the rear side. And if you don't want to go out and buy um, a full skin for the front side, this panel isn't too bad. In fact, I didn't even order one for this. This is for the other side. Um, we've just got two small holes down in the front here, and I'm hoping that I can get away with actually uh, just doing a couple of patches on that. Um, but anyway, the other one is actually quite bad, and so um, rare spares actually have a, a cool little rust panel that's hard to find. It's not really, uh, you know, promoted on the website on Resto Country, at least. Anyway, you really have to go and dig deep to search for it. And um, it's a door section lower. It's called right hand side. The uh, the code is RP three ten. If you ever looking for it, um, and it's it's a nice formed panel it just comes in a bare sheet style it's even got a uh, indented lip there if you want to lap weld it it's got a nice little recess there to do that so you literally just cut it and then fit it in that way I don't think I'll be doing that though I'll probably just join it I don't like lap welds because I think it opens up opportunities for rust and things like that so I will probably just um, join it join it the, uh, the way I've been doing all the other panels um, but yeah, it's got a nice little fold there. The profile's pretty pretty accurate. I've already rested it over the door like that. So yeah, and it goes high enough to, to get most of the rust which raises up over time, which is around about 18, I think this is about 18 centimetres high. So it'll cover it all. Um, these these utes are pretty pretty um, regular when it comes to their rust panel, their rust areas. Well, they will, um, yeah, the rust pretty evenly in every single car that I've seen. So um, sure enough, they've made a panel for it that will extend over the areas that you need to repair. So, so I'm gonna start with um, unpicking the spot wells, get the rear side uh, removed, and then we'll see how much rust is underneath for the front side. So I've uh, removed that lower section just to get a bit of a pilot hole happening so I can see what the, uh, the damage is underneath. Um, and fortunately this section, this uh, front panel is good. So yeah, the surface rust, but I'm gonna, just gonna uh, wire wheel that back. But as you can see, this internal structure here is pretty, pretty fucked. Um, this door is like borderline throwaway. But uh, yeah, as I've um, committed now, I'm just gonna see it through because it's a bit of a challenge, but you can see there, like it's perilously close to the, uh, that hinge point there, which you know can obviously lead to sagging doors and things like that. So I don't think it has, the doors were popping out on this thing, um, which I'm gonna have to rectify later down, uh, down the track. But I reckon that may have been, you know, a combination of maybe just saggy, um, hinges but also you know when when your door swings forward if you're taking off here on a hill or something these doors are really heavy because of all the tar and stuff inside um, and when you're on a hill and if you let and if your hinge spring is worn and it falls forward and bounces it can stretch the uh the door pillars and the hinges which then makes the bottom of your door come out or the top of your door so in order to fix that you can and they used to do this in apparently in the production liners get a little bit of timber and jam it uh, on the hinge and shut the door to pop either the top or the uh, lower section and bend it back in. So yeah, once I fix this, then that will be the other challenge of fitting them and making them flush. But as you can see, there's a lot of fucking work um, on this door. And uh, this panel is uh, not making it any easier, but um, yeah, because it's a little bit short. So I'm gonna have to patch that section up there. 
<clears throat> which is annoying, but also uh, underneath here, you can see that, you know, obviously I've got to bracket this. This is uh, the structural area of the door and that goes sort of right down there. And then there's a little bass of a pinhole area there as well and there. You know, and then you sort of lead up here and you've got pinholes running up all the way up there. So, <clears throat> nightmare. But uh, as I said, yeah, committed to doing it now. Um, and you can see all the pinholes here. Like, although this metal looks pretty fresh, it's, uh, it's actually not. You can see underneath it's um, yeah, really eaten, eaten through. And, you know, it's just a matter of time until the other stuff comes through, although you're not going to see this. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, as you're probably uh, aware by now, so I need to fix it. And uh, I've got that panel there. It's actually easier just to do the whole thing as, than it would be to try and get around it. So this section here I had to panel beat to make it flush because it was a fairly substantial fold where they've obviously vacuum pressed the steel. It's not an original um, moulding, obviously. They've just sucked it over a, a, a door mould or something. Um, so it's slightly bigger, but yeah, just sort of bashed that out. Um, and same here as well. Um, so anyway, now I'm trying to try and uh, get a, a good size cut to this panel. Fold that lip of the front panel up a little bit more so I can slide this lip in. And then, yeah, see how it fits and then make my final cut. So here we go. All right, one step closer, remove that, uh, that section there. Um, this here is just some, some gaping wound from uh, from someone putting a seven by 10 speaker in the door. I thought about closing it up, but I don't think I'll bother, I'll just leave it. Uh, I doubt I'll be putting speakers that big in. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do there, but uh, for the now I'm just gonna leave it. Um, so yeah, this section here is uh, progressing. I've got basically that bracket underneath there, as you know, was really rotten and it came down to there as well, so I decided to take that section out and split it up into two. Unfortunately, the panel, as you can see, comes short there, so there's a little lip that goes underneath this, so I folded all this back. You can see, it's all folded along there, and this metal's good, so I'm gonna leave it, I don't have to replace that skin. But uh, the join, basically there's a join there where this, uh, that's an underneath section and then that um, is a lip and there's a couple of spot welds and so it goes around there. So I'll show you, I'm going to put it on. So it's like that, but this lip will obviously tuck under this fold here. That needs to be trimmed about four mil in order to have it the same as the other one. It's a bit long. Obviously they give you a bit more meat so that you can play around with it. I'm going to have to trim this section here because I don't need that. This is all good metal, so I just really need this along this jo join here. Um, this is the bugger here. This, you know, it's not long enough, so unfortunately my rust was too substantial. I'm going to have to um, make a custom patch to bridge that gap. But as you can see, this uh, this section here will sit on top of this bracing here, and. Uh, and this is the patch for the bracing because the bracing was obviously rotten straight through. So I decided to split it up into two. Um, yeah, one patch here and then I'll make another little section there. Um, yeah, this one's probably more crucial because you, you will actually see this. Uh, and then I've got a couple of pinholes there. I'll just uh, fill them, fill them up with weld. Um, I've checked underneath there, it's not too bad. I've actually got to do the front patch, you can see the hole there. Um, yeah, so it's slowly but surely getting there. I had to do the, uh, the spot welds for these, for the, uh, the folding for that front skin. There's only three of them actually along there, um, and then one on the side. I'll have to take this up a little bit further, but once again, I have to cut a hole and patch that for the front section as well. Debating whether to do that before I actually put the rear skin on or not, so. I'm not too sure. I'd like to try and keep it as uh, 
as aligned as possible. So I may put the skin on first and then turn it around and do those patches just so to avoid warping or anything like that. But uh, yeah, it's a quite a complicated uh, repair this one and um, I'm slowly getting there. You can see Holden's put a heap of tar on there. I think I've spoken about that before. So we grind that back as well. Um, and then put some sound deadener on there, more modern style sound deadener, which is um, Dynamat or whatever it's called um, towards the end. So um, yeah, now I'll just uh, cut that other patch repair and um, continue to fix this, uh, this bracket section here. Okay, door update. Uh, I've flipped her over, um, or I've moved all the tar on the inside of the door, and I thought, well, while I've got access to the, to the back of that uh, front panel, I might as well repair these and then put the, the rear skin on. So there's two weird holes here, and then there's not really much uh, other rust along this panel. So all the, bottle, the bottom of this panel's really nice. And then there's a, uh, there's a bit of rust here, rust hole here, which is, I think is pretty standard. But yeah, this one here is a bit weird. It must have been, a, uh, I reckon, a door hit. And what's chipped to paint, that's chipped through the paint and gone to the metal. And obviously over time it's uh, rusted out because all the surrounding metal's fine. So I don't think it was from, you know, sludge and build up from the base. I honestly think that that, and you can sort of see the depression there where it's been a substantial hit at some stage. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, um, what's happened is I've ordered one of these panels um, for the right hand side and they've sent me two. So um, thanks for that Resto Country, uh, I'll, I'll put it to good use. Um, so what I'm going to do, even though it's uh, the opposite side as you can see, it's still got the same profile. Um, and these doors sort of have a flattened lower bit and then it sort of tapers off. It's got a slight bend in it as it's going sort of three quarters of the way up. Uh, and these panels look like they're reasonably well done. So, so what I've done is I've just marked out cardboard according to uh, the size of the area that needs repair. Um, and what I'll do is now that I've got that rough guide, I'll transfer that over and I know that the lip of that goes to the top lip of that and that's going to have more than enough meat to cover that whole repair and I get the profile for free so um, yeah that's going to be great and then down in the sec this lower section I'll do the same thing I'll make sure that the this corner here is uh, is cut out and um, matched in so um, so yeah I'll get started on that and then uh, once that's sorted uh, I can then KBS the inside and uh, weld up the um, that rear rust repair panel. So, um, all right, let's get into it. So I'm pretty happy with that. The, uh, the shape of the panel has held up nicely over that curve. I haven't had to do any uh, panel being at all. That's just straight off the, straight off the panel. Um, yeah, so I don't have to zinc treat. I think it's already got some kind of zinc treatment on it or clear coating. I'll just, uh, just recover. I'll just take back the, uh, that covering well, that coating slightly just to reveal the bare metal. 
and the front and the back and then we'll weld it in and then we can get started on the back panel. finished welding that patch in so that means that the uh, front skin is finished um, you can see the patch there it's not the greatest it's got a little lip at the top there um, but once again body filler will fix all that it's never going to be a shoker but I'm happy with that uh, so yeah that's done the uh, the curve is slightly off um, in the end on the main panel it's, it's always the way you think it lines up and then it ends up being slightly off once it's welded in, but I'll even that up with um, body filler as well. So, um, so before I put the rear section on, I've just got a few little areas to fix up. Um, and when I say little, probably more substantial than, uh, than I think. So this section here is quite bad, and also in here. Um, I think when these go, when these things rolled out the factory door, they uh, hold and bog this whole inner section up here to stop water getting in from the two where the two panels meet. But the technology of the bog or whatever back in those days, and, and obviously time has allowed water to uh, pool in beside there, and um, they're probably a little that body fill is probably a little bit porous. And as you can see, it's you know it's eaten eaten in here and also eaten straight through here, which is a real bastard to fix. Um, so this section I'll probably do a small strip panel um, and there I might have to do the same same kind of thing and all these little pinholes or large pinholes along here I'm just going to just plug weld them because yeah I don't want to be here forever I've already gone above and beyond with this door so um, so uh, yeah now we'll kick on with um, with repairing these panels or these areas here and then uh, can finally get around to uh, putting that last patch repair on the uh, on the rear of the door. So uh, just a continuation on this window and this door here. Um, I've managed to clean up all the inside, and I was trying to sort of get around having to remove everything um, to uh, to paint it and clean it inside. But you know, you've come this far, and then you might as well do it all properly. So <clears throat> I've had to remove the locking mechanism, which is this strange little contraption here. Uh, that's basically where the door locks in there, and that goes against the uh, inside of the wall. Um, of the door uh, and then it's just got these little crude uh, latch um, what do you call it rods I suppose that, that hook in and then you know as you unlock the door that uh, pull the handle of the door it unlocks this latch here so I reckon uh, this is going to be all right to reuse although it's pretty dirty um, it's just dirty there's no real anything wrong with it so uh, I'm going to continue to use that one um, the other thing inside the door is obviously the window mechanism to, to wind the window up um, so you get a couple of bolts uh, that hold this up against the, uh, the door frame this is pretty good condition you can see it's been uh, plated uh, at some stage to make it rust proof but um, the things that go in them are these little plastic bearings um, and so you can see here this window is really hard to wind up and I can see why because this uh, bearing is actually gone so uh, I'm going to have to see if I can actually find a new one to replace that with. They are only 50 bucks each from Rare Spares anyway, so they're not going to break the bank. Um, so I'll see if I can get a new one of these. If not, I'll just uh, buy a whole new unit and replace it. All right, so I've cleaned all the inside of the, uh, the door skin and the underneath of it as well. Um, and now it's come time to, put, uh, to try out this KBS. I've spoken about this many times. I'm going to use it on the chassis and the underneath of the uh, the body, but uh, yeah, it can go anywhere really. That um, is going to be sus um, it's going to be areas that will be um, exposed to water 
uh, and darkness, which you know promotes um, rust. So the inside of the doors is a perfect example. So I'm going to treat the inside of the doors with this. Um, it'll be the first time I've used it. So I'm going to try using it with the brush. I was going to do it with a, uh, a spray, but I think it's going to be better and uh, cleaner to do it with the brush for a start, and we'll see how we go. Uh, so it's the next day and I've uh, KBS the inside of that uh, door so it's all oh, we've got polyurethane all throughout there I've taken all the internals off but I was just uh, putting the door lock back in um, and all the window white winders etc but I thought I might take them back out I'll take them back out and then what I'll do is once I've welded this I'll weld this panel in here and then I'm going to etch prime the whole door. Um, obviously, after giving it a quick deox and a um, and a, a wash, and then I'll make a quick temporary booth and etch prime the whole thing, and then it's sealed. And then I can start putting in back in the the latch and the window mechanism. I'm going to put it all back in just so that I know what the layout is because once I take this one apart, um, which I've been using for reference. I don't want to have two of them obviously taken apart and then I have no reference again because you know this is my biggest fear with it taking everything apart is is putting it all back together again so that's what I'm trying to do is just to eliminate any further headaches and just um, keep one assembled at all times so that we know I know exactly how it goes together because it is quite complicated with all the parts and wires and rods everywhere so um yeah so this will be the plan weld that section in now prep it Edge prime it, and reassemble, and that door's done. So uh, finally finished the door. Um, monstrous effort, all in all. It was uh, over four days on and off, um, but pretty much, you know, six hours a day. And uh, being the first one, you're always sort of <coughs> learning and figuring out the best ways to do it. So I'm sure that the second door is not going to be as, as long as this one. But um, yeah, there's certainly a lot of work and it's probably, you know, been the most arduous uh, fabrication I've done so far in this whole build. It's just because it's quite fiddly, you know, you, you sort of, you, you you're trying to work with things that you can't see because you can't take the skin off uh, on the inside and you know in order to see right up inside uh, near the top section so yeah and also the, the locking mechanism and the window mechanics mechanisms the bolts and all that kind of stuff is pretty fiddly so uh, all that needs to come out and come back in again but in between that you've got to do remove all the tar and um, you know cut little sections that are quite awkward if for instance down near the uh, bottom of, of the rear of the door it's really quite awkward there uh, to try and get a straight cut and you know your, your discs um, that 75 mil uh, Kuiper disc that I've got has been working absolute 
um, dream on this because it's uh, just the perfect size to sort of to get into those hard hard spots. So um, uh, yeah. So all in all, I'm uh, I'm happy with the result. Uh, the in the final join is pretty good. It was uh, as you can see, it's quite seamless. Um, running right along that uh, fold section um, on the rear of the door and then where that ugly speaker holes cut out um, I just left and then fabricated a little weird section that was left over that I mentioned that because um, it was a little bit too high for my uh, for my, my rust was a little bit too high for the patch repair so I had to then fabricate this awkward little section at the end which filled out nicely and you can sort of just see the welds there but you're not going to see it anyway because it's uh, going to be hidden so um, the drain plugs came up reasonably well. I'm not uh, not too sure if I'll be finished with those, but I can always fabricate them. And the drill holes I've left until we um, until the final assembly where we're putting the rubbers on, and then I'll drill out uh, according to where I need it. So um, yeah, so that's it for this episode. Um, I wanted to etch prime it, but uh, it's going to have to wait till next time. So if you like this episode, give us a thumbs up. Uh, and if you've seen any of these uh, episodes, please subscribe because. Uh, I'm getting closer and closer to a, a thousand subs, which is awesome. Um, it's only small compared to other channels, but that's good for me. So anyway, until next time, see ya.